Today's lesson is day two, frequency bar graphs histogram. So hopefully you guys have seen a bar graph and a histogram before. Maybe some of you even know the difference between the two. Um, we do have two very important vocab words here, categorical variable and quantitative variable. So a categorical variable is a variable such as color, hometown, ethnicity, um, any number of things that take categories. That's why it's called a category variable is that places you into a category. What's everyone's hair color in your trig class? Um, you would put everyone in categories, brown hair, red hair, black hair, blonde hair, whatever. Um, quantitative variable, on the other hand, is a variable that takes a numerical representation. So um, it is referred to as, um, it would make sense if you were taking an average of these variables. Um, if you were looking at like an average GPA, an average height, an average age, those are all numerical representations of something that you would write down or record about people when you ask them questions. And it makes sense to want to know, for example, what an average of those numbers are. You can't average everyone's favorite color together. That's a big clue that it's a categorical variable. But you can average everyone's height, for example. That is a huge clue that it is a quantitative variable. Just as a side note, um, sometimes categorical variables are also referred to as qualitative. That's just another word for it. Our textbook doesn't use that word, but um, just as an FYI, if you go on to college to study anything that has to do with his, um, with statistics, sometimes they will use qualitative in terms of um, these variables as opposed to the word categorical. Anyways, moving on. Frequency, the number something happens. So the frequency, what I would do is I would record the number of brunettes in my math class if I were trying to figure that out. Um, a bar graph is a graph with bars. A histogram is also a graph with bars. Um, some really important key concepts here, though, is that a bar graph uses categorical data and a histogram uses quantitative data. And there's a couple other important things down here. In a bar graph, the bars don't touch. The reason for that is because the order doesn't matter in a bar graph. I could put brown hair first, or I could put blonde hair first, or I could put red hair first. It doesn't matter where you put the bars, therefore you also don't make them touch. However, in a histogram, the bars do touch. Most of the time, they represent a range. Like, if you have a GPA between 3 and 3.5, you're in this category. If you have a GPA between 3.5 and 4, then you're in this bar in the histogram that you were constructing. Um, you do have to put the x-axis in the right order, obviously. That's why the bars do touch, and um, the x-axis does need to go in a certain location. You have to number the x-axis in order. Okay, anyways, what I have done is I have taken a quick poll. The results are in. Apparently Oreos are the preferred snack of my class at least. And what we have to do here is we have to construct a bar graph of this. And so here are my frequencies, aka my tallies. That's the vocab word I'm going to be using for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a bar graph. And the reason it's a bar graph, again, remember, is because these are categories. You guys all chose what category you wanted to be in. Um, these are not numerical values. So that's where why on my x-axis I am going to label them as such. I'm going to put Snickers, Cheez-Its, Skittles, whatever. I'm going to pause the video and label that real quick. Anyway, so I labeled my x-axis, and again, I can't stress this enough, the order down here does not matter. You can put these alphabetically if you want to. You can put them in order in terms of least to greatest or greatest to least. That doesn't matter. That is another reason why it's a bar graph. Okay, so my y-axis is just going to be my tallies. And if you look up here, the minimum number of people in a category is 2, and the maximum number is 7. And so therefore, I only need to number these to 7. 5, 6, 7. 5, 3, 1, you get the point. Okay, and the only reason why I staggered these y axis or x axis labels is just so it wasn't so crowded and it would be a little bit easier to be read. Okay, anyway, so for Snickers, I have four people in that category. Here's what my bar looks like. For Cheez Its, I have three people in that category. Um, what I would do if I were turning this in for a grade would probably use my ID to make straight bars and make sure everything lines up appropriately so it's very obvious. It's common to um, label these 
like so, so that it's very clear that there are four people in the Snickers category, whatever, especially since I, it's hard to write on my iPad, like so. Seven people in the Oreo category, only two people in the Garrett's category, sorry Garrett's, and then three in the Doritos category. In case anybody's curious, I am in the Doritos category, let's move on. Okay, how many people are in the class? How can you tell? Well, what I could do is add up all my tallies in my little frequency graph up there, or couldn't I just add all these numbers up? Yes, that would probably be a little bit faster. So four plus three plus three plus seven plus two plus three equals 22. All I did is I added up the frequencies. I'm trying to use vocab words whenever possible. Um, it's not a good idea in stats to use words like numbers, data, use like more professional language. Um, what proportion, ooh, this is an interesting word. What this means is a fraction, but you write it as a decimal. Okay, so that's what proportion means. That is an important vocab word. We're gonna continue using that as well. What proportion of the class use, chose Doritos? So my Doritos category, the frequency was three out of the 22. So I have three out of 22, which equals 0.136, AKA 13.6% is the percentage of the class that chose Doritos. So proportion is usually a fraction written as a decimal, FYI. What proportion of the class did not choose candy? Okay, so that means what I need to do is add up all my numbers, obviously, that do not include candy. So I'm skipping the Snickers and I'm skipping the Skittles. Nothing else there is, ca is um, candy. So what I could do a slow way is to add up all the other ones. I could take three, which is the um, Cheez-Its, plus seven, which is the Oreos, plus two, which is Garrett's, plus three, which is Doritos, and get 15. Or sometimes there's a faster way. I could take the total class and just subtract my two um, candies. So the Snickers, there were four people there, and the three people of the Skittles. I get the same answer either way, but as you guys know, SAT types of questions, it might be faster if you have a bunch of categories in a question where it says when did they, what proportion did not choose candy. I haven't answered the question for proportion yet, by the way, but it might be faster if you had a bunch of categories. Instead of adding them all up, which would take a little bit more time, maybe take the total and just subtract the candies. Then you end up with the same number. Anyways, and so my total number there is going to be 15 out of 22, which is 0.681. Okay. Next question is about NBA. And so we have 30 NBA teams during the 2009-2010 season, so this data is a little bit outdated, but what they've done is they have recorded um, average number of points, abbreviation PTSG, points per game. Um, and it's, let's see, out of the 30 NBA teams. So we have 30 numbers up here. Reason why they're decimals is because it is average points scored per game for the whole season. Anyways, what classes should we use to more efficiently analyze the data? So first of all, what I want you to notice is that this is quantitative data because these are numbers. Points per game represent numerical data. Okay, so classes should we use to be able to more efficiently analyze the data? Um, this word classes is going to be like our x-axis labels. And so I'll start my frequency histogram down here. And what I want to do is I don't want to have a bar for like 100 points and a bar for 101 points and a bar for 102 points because first of all, a lot of these numbers are decimals. I don't know where those would fall. Second of all, I would have a lot of bars and that would be a really difficult um, graph to analyze. So what I have to figure out is how about I make like 100 to 105 and that would be one of my bars. And any of these values that are between 100 and 105 would fall into that category. And that would be what I would use as my frequency. There are a lot of ways to come up with classes. I'm just, the first thing I thought of was using five points. So five point increments. And what I need to figure out is what my minimum and my maximum number are here. This is the minimum if you scan the list really quick. And the maximum happens to be right under it, 110. 
Therefore, what if I did 90 to 95, 95 to 100? I did increments of five points along my x-axis, and therefore I think I would be able to fit everything in there. So I'm going to start by labeling my x-axis, and it is common if you're not going to start it at zero to show this little squiggly line here. And so what that means is I'm going to start here at 90, not starting at zero. Anyways, I'm going to go to 95, and I'm just going to label by fives. And that's where I'm going to stop because my max is less than 115. And I'm going to label my y-axis like so. I'm going to put tallies there, but I need to first figure out like how high do I need to make these bars. So one at a time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to search my list for numbers in the first class. So these are what classes are. Um, kind of like categories down here, except I don't want to use the word categories because they don't have... Um, they're not categories, they're actual numerical data. But the, cl the first class is 90 to 95. And that's what I'm going to refer to as a class here. You guys are all in classes in high school, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, but you're not all the exact same age. But there's a range, and so if you can think of the vocab word classes in terms of that, freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors, we are putting all of these points per game into these classes down here. The first one is between 90 and 95. So I'm going to look through my list, and I am going to find numbers that are between 90 and 95. And I'm going to cross them off so that I don't like double count them, and I make sure I don't skip anything. So I have this one, and I have this one. And those are the only two that are between 90 and 95. Again, I don't know how high I need to make this bar. I don't know what my maximum frequency is going to be. So all I'm going to do, this is just a tip for you on constructing histograms. I'm just going to put a 2 right there because there are two teams that fall into that class. I'm going to scan out and I'm going to go to my next class, which is between 95 and 100. And so that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to fill in all of these classes down here, and I'm going to cross off these games as I work my way through. And so here is the data that I came up with. Quick check to make sure you didn't skip any numbers up here. You know there are 30 teams in this set of data, so these numbers right here should add up to 30. Um, and you can just double check. It's a little bit annoying because those numbers are kind of difficult to look through because they're decimals. But anyways, now I know that my highest bar has to go up to 15. So now I can figure out how I need to label my y-axis. I didn't know how high that bar of 2 needed to go. But I'm going to go by 2s here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And you guys, just as a tip, um, when you're asked to construct a, a histogram or a bar graph or something, most likely yours is going to look a tiny bit different than the person sitting next to you. And that's okay. There's a lot of ways to label the y-axis. I could have gone by ones. I could have gone by threes. Um, I could have chosen different classes down here if I wanted to. There's a lot of different ways that are still appropriate on how to construct these um, graphs, okay? So my very first bar goes up to 2. My second one goes up to 10. And that makes it really easy to construct. Again, if I were turning this in for a grade, I would probably use my ID so that these lines would be straight. This is 2, and this is only 1. Okay. Um, last question, what is the median number of points scored per game? How are you finding this number? So I'm going to talk yeah. about how we could actually find it. Um, that would mean I would have to line up all 30 of these data values in order, and I would have to slice my list in half. There would be 15 teams on each side. There wouldn't be a middle team. Therefore, I'd have to take my two middle teams and average them together. That was in the first video. That's how to find the median if there isn't a certain number at the, um, in, the, in the middle. However, the median number of points, I know there are 30 teams. That means I am looking for team number 15 and 16, and I'm pretty sure if there are two teams here and 10 teams here, that adds up to 12. So team numbers 15 and 16 fall into this range. So what I'm going to say for this problem is because this is such a large set of data, there is a way to estimate it and to make a really good guess in terms of what the median actually is based on this histogram. If you were just given this histogram and you did not have the actual data, you would not be able to answer this question exactly. Therefore, that's what I want to talk about now. Teams number 15 and 16 are in this 
class. And that is as good as we can do if we didn't have this data. Again, we could find the actual median, but in this case, it is okay to say between 100 and 105. That's all for tonight, you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening.